Hey everyone, it's uh, Dave Palais, JP25 Media, and a special guest, a really good friend of mine, is Stephen Woods. And you all know him from 97.3, the Padre flagship station. Of course, been in Woods morning show from five to nine. 97.3 doing a great job since he came to town. And I, and I imagine when you got into radio, Steve, that not only do you think, hey, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make a run at this in a city that I'm not familiar with, but at the same time, did you ever think it would be sports and the San Diego Padres would be the backbone to your success? You know, it's funny. I, I did. That's the weird part is that when I first got the call to move here, it was, hey, do you want to come on my show? It's from Mikey. And he said, do you want to come on my show and be the sports guy and I said well yeah like I don't like I didn't know anything I didn't know if what that meant really and turns out I didn't really do a lot of sports on our old show and um but that was originally what he hired me for and then pretty soon after we got in a room together we all realized okay that's the chemistry Mikey and Woods and everything's going to kind of run through those two um and then my role kind of shifted but the funny thing is, Dave, is that I always, my favorites back home, and you guys always give me shit for it, uh, is called The Hard Line with Mike Reiner. We always have Reiner on the air. His show was the exact show I wanted to do. Yeah, I wanted to talk about local sports, but I also wanted to be able to come in and talk about Eddie Van Halen. I wanted to be able to talk about a movie or a documentary and, you know, a lot like you guys do on your show. I didn't yeah. want to come in and do a four hour sports show and uh, I still don't. And I never do. I never want to do a four hour sports show. There's not enough Dane, you know, sometimes we do, you know, sometimes, yeah, we've done four hours on the Padres before, but man, I also like talking about music. I also like talking about movies and my kid and my wife and interpersonal relationships and, you know, drama and things like that. That's, that's fun for me. Um, so I, it's weird. I, I, I have vision for the show I wanted to, to do. And it's weird that it's actually kind of, we're, we're there. We're kind of in the, the first, I, it's hard to get Ben to go outside the realm sometimes, but he's done a great job at adapting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird. Cause that, that kind of was my vision all along. You know, I tell you what, as a person that does tune in, and, and obviously I'm bothering you at five in the morning because I'm up at five and, and I flip on as soon as I walk downstairs, I'm listening to your show through the app. I think your show honestly got better because of the pandemic. It, it forced you guys to, especially a guy like Ben, to get away from sports. And Paul seems like he's up for anything, but honestly believe you guys became better radio broadcasters because oh, of the pandemic. I lost you. I got you right now. I can hear you. You got me? Can you? Hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Hold on, say something. Damn it! All right, let's go. Oh, I lost. I lost you there for a second. I wonder if it's okay. my. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll repeat the question. So, okay. What I was saying was, I think you guys honestly got better on your show because of the pandemic, and I think it, it forced Ben to kind of come out of the sports mode because there was nothing to talk about. And then Paul looks like he's up for anything, but I think it made you guys better broadcasters. Uh, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. Yeah, it was a challenge, and, and uh, it was a challenge I was kind of looking forward to at the beginning. Now, again, I didn't know it was going to last as long as it did, and by the end of it, you know, I was really ready for sports to be back, but um, those four months, I'm proud of the work we did. I'm proud of the, the work Paul did, booking guests. I'm proud of how flexible Ben was, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm mostly proud of how much we cared still about doing a four hour entertaining show and our ratings stayed really good throughout the pandemic, which I was, I, I wish I could say, Oh no, I knew they would be. I didn't, I was really terrified, <laughs> but we did, they stayed really, really good, strong. And so, um, but it, we put a lot of work into that, man. We really did. And I, I looked at it for me as an opportunity as kind of the, uh, you know, I, Ben is very easygoing. And if I say, Hey, trust me, this is going to work. He tends to trust me. Uh, he's great. He doesn't come to the table with a lot of um, ideas about like content and bits, but he comes with his own sports takes and he does kind of his own sports work. And, you know, Paul is just great at piecing everything together. When I say it, the best about our show is really when I say, Ben, this is what I want, Paul. And Paul just knows the audio to play and how to edit it together so that's the good part like it only it comes with experience as you know and being in the room together for a while it's not something that you can do day one 
you know. No, absolutely. You guys have, have again, have done a fantastic job and the people in San Diego love you. They love the fact you're kind of steering the ship for this ride of what the Padres have gone through. With uh, with the Padres, obviously listening to you the last couple of days, getting ready for game one, complete optimism. You know, everything was, yeah. hey, this is going to happen. We're all great, ready to go. Flip on this morning and it's, you know, it's a good time to talk a little Van Halen because he's near and dear to your heart. Eddie Van Halen, mm -hmm. unfortunately, passed away. But at the same time, it kept you from having to talk about the disappointment of losing game one to the Dodgers and the effort of everything that they just kind of went the wrong way. Emotions are obviously a big part of sports, but I think it's one of those things, tell me if I'm wrong, that I think really connects you to your fan base because of the fact that they hurt when you're hurting and, and they're excited when you're excited. Yeah, it's it's funny because, you know, we know a lot of the, we know most of the same people in the media and there's this thing that happens with the media um, where they are afraid to let it be known afraid to be fans I think and, and maybe afraid's not the right word I don't know they're um there are a lot of them are bitter I don't know they I just, just I, they want the game to go fast they just want it over with they aren't fans like yeah you know, baseball yeah I agree and and like I'm just I live and die I always have and I always will, you know, if I got, if I got canned tomorrow, the, the, the cool part about being involved um, and doing a sports show in San Diego has been the, you know, cause I've said it a thousand times when I moved here, like I said, Dave, if I moved to Cincinnati and got a job doing Cincinnati radio, guess who would be a giant fucking Reds fan right now? Yeah, Me. Exactly. Yeah. That's the town I live in. I'm going to, I'm going to get behind him. Because what happens is I love watching the game and it doesn't matter if it's in May, it doesn't matter if it's in August, I'm going to watch and I'm going to be invested no matter where I live. You know, again, if I'm living in Miami, I'm wearing fucking multicolored hats and shit, fucking Marlins fan. It, it doesn't, <laughs> it old, doesn't matter. That center field statue in, in, yeah. that they used to have in the front yard. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I would, I would have been on board. And so to watch and uh, see the, the, the kind of ascension of this team over the last few years has been really fun. And then of course, starting a morning show, like the year they signed Manny, who's always been one of my favorite players. Um, he murdered the Yankees in the AL East. And he was just one of those guys I coveted. And I thought there's no, there's no question. He's going to be a Yankee. Like in my mind, I thought he's going to be a Yankee and they didn't take him. And, and when the Padres got him, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now he's here. I get to see him. Maybe I'll get to meet him someday. I'm a 10 boy at the end of the day when it comes to these players. When those guys walk in the room uh, at spring training and Fernando Tatis walks in, dude, I shit my pants. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, Trevor Hoffman getting to, to know him a little bit over the years. Dude, getting to sit and, like, have Trevor Hoffman heckle me at fantasy camp and shit like that. It's stuff that I never in my wildest dreams thought would happen to me. And uh, so I, I try to always be really grateful for that because we got lucky, man. Our, our, our show started with the ascension uh, of the Padres. And I always tell the guys like, hey, boys, grab the rocket by the tail, you know, because this could carry us as a show for the next, you know, six, eight years. And we'll always have something to talk about. We'll always be passionate about it because we're all really passionate baseball fans. Yeah. And I, I, you know, as much as I try and fake my way through the NFL, the NBA, college football, and I like a lot of that. I like it, some of it on an ancillary level. I mean, baseball is just it for me. I, I would do a four-hour baseball show every day of the week. And just so happens I live in a city with only one team. So lucky me, right? I can never yeah. go wrong uh, flagship or not, if I got fired tomorrow and had to go work on another station, I'm still talking about the Padres the same way that I do now. You know, I, I kind of have a little bit of the the same thing where I was, I was born in LA. I moved to, to Nashville, Tennessee when I was little, moved back to LA for high school, but came to San Diego State. And I've been here the most of my life. But as a kid, my fa first favorite ba baseball player, everybody remembers, mine was Steve Garvey. And he yep. ended up that the Padres wouldn't give him, excuse me, the Dodgers wouldn't give him $450,000. And the Padres, had a, it's not even the minimum anymore. And I know. Um, and the, basically the Padres stepped up and they they grabbed him. And I said, well, I'm, I'm rooting for the Pods. And I was hooked with the Padres and unfortunately broke his thumb his first year. But then he leads them to the World Series with the big home run. But 
when they when he was getting older, I'm going, I'm going to need a new favorite baseball player. And that yep. baseball player was Tony Gwynn, who was a tennis, who was families from Tennessee. They used to talk about him, like the people in Tennessee talk about Mookie Betts, they're proud of him. And so I got to know Tony Gwynn, just like you talked about with Trevor. And here's the weird thing, being here long enough is when Tony Gwynn Jr., who works with you at, at 97.3, yep. I used to take him up to Laker games when he was a little kid. And now that the Lakers are trying to win this championship and it's for Kobe, I used to show you how long that th this has gone on. When Kobe first got in the NBA, I drove him to Long Beach. Him and I were going to summer league basketball games to watch Kobe as a teenager. And now here he is with, with a, as a father and, and doing great on TV and on radio. And it, Trevor Hoffman, as you said, has become a great friend of yours. And the other day his kids text me because he was friends with my son. And uh, it was it was awesome. I mean, the whole thing has been crazy as far as throwing yourself into that team. I know you give me a hard time and a lot of people don't understand how you can root for two teams so close together, but these are the places I live. And I believe, like you said, yeah. you throw, your, throw yourself into it 100%. And the only reason I didn't do it with the Chargers is because I found out there were things that were going on behind the scenes that I wasn't a fan of. And I couldn't support ownership to go, that those aren't my beliefs. And I'm not gonna support a guy that believes the things he believes. Oh, trust me, I project all your Dodgers, all my shit on you because I take, you know, not as much grief as you because I'm also not a dick about it like you are. But I, <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 uh, I obviously have uh, a root, rooting interest in the Yankees and, and have since I was 10 years old when, you know, I've told the story, I've told the story before, but like I didn't have a dad. And so uh, it's much like my radio career. If my, if the man that I now call my dad was a, was a twins fan i'd be a fucking massive twins fan um yeah. just so hap just so happens his dad went to manhattan college and used to skip school to go watch joe dimaggio play and that was it and then he passed it on my dad grew up in detroit and hated the tigers because his dad liked the yankees and they would go see mickey mantle play and then in 1985, when my parents got married, my dad could have been like, oh, I love, you know, I love the Bills and I love the Mets and I love the uh, Pistons. And those would have been my teams because whatever he did, I did, you know, and I liked. And, and that's, it's weird to see it happen with my son now. And he does yeah. what I do. And he, he curses like I curse. And he, uh, <laughs> you know, he loves baseball like I love. He's weird. It, 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 it's exactly what happened to me at a much later time. And um, so, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've always made this. I've kind of made the statement that, you know, the Padres, it's weird, though, because it switched a little bit, man. The Padres are my, are my close friends and the Yankees were my family. But I really feel now with uh with me raising my son as a Padre fan um and that's the deal like I'm I want him to have that pride in this team I don't you know taking shit for being fans of other teams sucks it sucks like you you know you want you wear it all the time and um but I'll never forget those memories with my dad watching Yankee games and and my son will never forget those memories watching Padre games with his old man and plus fuck man like I don't know how anybody could watch this team and not like what they see in the direction that they're finally going in. And, and it's nice to see some of this shit pay off. Um, things that we've heard about Ryan Weathers coming in last night, wasn't just a kid make, making his major league debut. It was like the payoff of, of all of these things that we've heard, right? Like watching Patino settle in a little bit. Okay. I believe you guys now there's, you know, you, you buy into, to some of the the young kids and and watching that last night was like that's why i love this team a lot man because we're starting to they're getting rid of the guys that aren't performing and they're bringing up the guys that they drafted and and brought along and believe in and to see that last night was really cool that was something else it was interesting to see weathers come in and he was i mean you saw him you're sweating like crazy and he was working oh, yeah. extremely fast and it was interesting when he got to the veteran hitters like a Justin Turner who were stepping out and making him get out of his rhythm. And yeah. they were trying to control the pace. Go, hold on, young kid. You aren't going to control the pace like you did to the person in front of me. And it, it kind of threw him off his game and drew a couple walks. But it, there has to be so much emotion. You know your dad's right over there watching yep. you. You're, That's it's, the it's worst natural. part. Yeah, it's, pr it's primetime TV. Everybody's watching what you're doing. It's been your dream. And you're a young kid where your emotions are going through the roof. It was 
what is great about about baseball and, and fathers and sons it's like like you mentioned you know it's uh, yeah. uh my, my dad put me into the teams that that i followed just like you know your dad did and it's funny you, you tease me about even the, the the yankee stuff but my dad raised me as a dodger fan but he used to talk about the yankees all the time i always talk about the pinstripes, the pinstripes and and I was like, well, wh- which is it? What are we rooting for here? And Yeah, what are we doing <laughs> here, man? Yeah, yeah, if he knew down the line I'd get killed on Twitter for it, I don't think he would have uh, would have done it to me. But <laughs> he, he got, into my, got into my head. But I love the whole the, the father-son thing. And I love seeing your son and the Padre gear and, and ready to go and, and swearing like a disappointed Padre fan when it's time to swear. But yeah, it, it, it's just it's been really, it's, really cool. It's also, too, like, it's all, you know, it's funny, and I say it uh, a lot. It's all the people along the way that I've met in the last 10 years, because I, I guess I didn't really know what it meant to be a Padre fan until about two, until Lamette, until that, when Lamette came out, you know, in a start that every ace takes, right? Every ace yep. goes and does that little tune up for the playoff start, right? Garrett Cole did it. You know, you Darvish did it. Uh, Walker Bueller did it. Kershaw did it. Everybody does it but only Lamette doesn't make it past. Yeah. And I, th- it was at that moment when I went, you got to be fucking kidding me. All you had to do was get through three, four innings, get tuned up, you're ready to go. And that was that sinking pit in my stomach where I went, yeah, I, I'm a fan. Now I get it because now I'm, I'm really living and dying um, with these guys. And, and it was at that moment I feel like I became a true Padre fan where – I was fucked up the rest of the day and the entire weekend. I just, I didn't feel right. It sucked when they, when they clinched, I was like, yippee. They had to walk off. I was like, <laughs> oh, great. At what cost, you know, really at what cost. And it was at that moment that I, that I knew, okay, now that's what these people have been talking about. And, and the thing that's made me the biggest fan are, are those guys. And, you know, we know a lot of the same people and, Watching them live and die with a team that's consistently broken their heart every single year, most most of the time. Um, watching some of the stuff pay off for them, these are people that I love dearly. And uh, that makes me happy. And that makes me a bigger fan. And like all of the, the diehards, man, it's, you know, look, it, there's challenges, I think, to being a fan of any team, you know, and, and people may not people may you look at the Dodgers and go, dude, you got nothing to complain about about. And you're like, the fuck we don't, we spend all this money. We never win the ultimate prize. It's we're a fucking laughing stock. Everyone makes fun of us for that. You know, it's, I always said for a Yankee fan, like, yeah, it's, it's nice to have really great players. You know, what fucking sucks is <laughs> rooting for, you know, rooting for Wade Boggs, rooting for Jacoby Ellsbury, rooting for Roger Clemens, rooting for fucking Kevin Euclid rooting for guys that the Yankees decide to bring in, pay a shitload of money to that were Red Sox. You're like, this sucks. Like, I don't want yeah. this. It, it's, it's terrible. So it's, it's, yeah, you love the World Series. You love the appearances, but the expectations are raised so much. What I love the most about the Padres is that you always say it, demand more. And I think, you, I think Padre fans finally are. And I think they're sick and tired of being told how to be fans. They're sick and yep. tired of they're sick and tired of being told that they're not good enough. Um, it, the only thing, man, that is, is killing me is that I would have loved, obviously, and I know you would have too. You're a baseball guy before you're anything. You would have loved to see Lamette, and you would have loved to see Clevenger healthy. You would have loved it. We all would. Yeah, I'm with because you 100 on that. We, you have to, and I'm I've always been that way. I want give me. Give me Verlander and Cole and McCullers, and I'll fucking see if I can get through them. And if I can't, tip my hat. I want yeah. Kershaw. I want Bueller. You know, I want Gonsolin or whatever. I don't want. I don't want what the Dodgers are facing now in the Padres, right? I don't want my. I don't want your number four and maybe your five throwing game yeah. one and two. I really want to beat the best. And um, not if the Dodgers win this series you know, they'll take it because it's the next step to their eventual goal. They only need, you know, they want to win a world series. They have to win a world series pressures on them to do so. Um, but they're not going to be like, well, they didn't have lament and Clevenger. It doesn't count. Fuck it. You play who's in front of you. But as a Dodger fan, a smart Dodger fan, you want Clev, you want Clevenger and lament too, because then, you know, it just, it takes away the excuses and look, 
excuses are like assholes, but man, losing your one and two fucking sucks. It really sucks. I hate it. All right. So here's the deal. You're right. People aren't going to remember in the future if the Dodgers go ahead and win this series and do whatever. Right. But we, we know. I mean, we're going to know when did the season turn. It happened when Lamette got hurt in San Francisco. That's and it. it happened that that, that, that moment. I mean, yep. We know. And it's, it's funny. If you remember the very first series of the 60-game schedule, Paddock goes, and then Lamette goes the next day. And Lamette, actually, number-wise, didn't look as good as Paddock. But I'm looking at my son, who's in the room, as a baseball guy, too. And we both went, this guy is electric. This guy is different than he was in years past. This guy has DeGrom type stuff. He yeah. is outstanding. He's Garrett Cole. And yeah. He's, he's, he's that dude you throw out there and you're like, we're winning this game. Period. hundred yeah, percent. You're right. You're, you're right on that. The guy is, is crazy, freaking good. It, talented. It, it's extremely sad. I was, I was saying to, to Jeff, I said, look, what I'm worried about with those two guys they have years in front of them that the Padres control. I'm really worried about don't push them into something because they're going to tell you I'm fine. Every pitcher says I'm fine. Next Every thing you know, pitcher. they're missing 2021. And that was my biggest fear when I, I'm watching Clevenger last night going, please don't come walking out with Jason, the doctor. That's all I don't want to say. And then when the Dodgers had that long inning and I'm like, he hasn't thrown a pitch in a long freaking time. Yeah. This isn't good either. And so yeah. the, the whole thing is absolutely terrible. Yeah, it sucks. And, and Clevenger, you know, the, both of these guys have had some issues in the past. And it's so hard because, you know, you haven't, you haven't been to the postseason in so long and you haven't gone this far in so long. And then to, like, look at it and go, well, let's just punt and worry about 2021. Like, and that's the hardest part is, like, no, nah, we had it. Like, we had the team. They'd made the moves. They shored up the bullpen. They have the the offense, like everything's clicking. And when those two cats go down, you're just like, all right, well, I mean, you have to, we have to stop torturing ourselves thinking, well, you know, we could pitch the next series. Like it's done. It's over. Let them go. Try to cobble together a couple wins and at least, you know, make life difficult on the Dodgers, show some fight, show some, um, because it, look, in the next four games, you're essentially, depending on what Davies does tonight, I mean, you're looking down the barrel of, of three bullpen games in a row, which I I don't know the deepest teams in baseball could do three bullpen days in a okay. row. I just, you, I, I just don't. You may be through this, yeah. It may be even this series, but you can't do it in the, yeah, in the NLCS. Yeah, in the, I mean, no. You're doing smoke and mirrors right now, and you're seeing guys that don't look like they did when they're coming to relief just yesterday. Going yeah. That Cardinal series took a lot out of those guys. It did. It you did. Know. And, you know, I was, I was really proud of the way they battled back losing a uh, game one in a weird season, you know, against the Cardinals and, and then coming out and, and playing a really exciting game in game two. And then, and then putting that like dominant nail in the coffin in game three, like they weren't fucking around in game three, they went right for it and they had a swagger about them. And I think they had a little swagger to them last night too, until Clev went out, you could feel the air uh, go out of the, the the sideline a little bit and then the error was just like oh no like that's that's such a play that has to be made by eric hosmer and i think he'd be the first to tell you um well, he's got to make that play has to be made by hosmer all right you're gonna give well, me a little bit of credit on this one this is this is the part of the interview that I, I i want i want a little bit of credit if bellinger doesn't bust his ass down that line it, it's an easier play come on a little uh, bit of a hustle play. Forced to yeah, hosmer. Hosmer's i mean hosmer's feet were terrible feet, on that play. He was all fucking tangled up. Yeah. Uh, he looks right. He looks, the bag never looks, moves, asshole. It's right there. You, and you know, you know where that bag is. Yeah. I mean, look, Cody Bellinger can't hit a fucking water if he fell out of a boat. So he's got to yeah, do something. He can't. He he's can't. fucking terrible. And that's the thing that drives me nuts. Like, like you can't walk fucking Muncie and you can't walk fucking Bellinger. Like these yeah. guys are terrible this year. They're terrible. Terrible. And you're putting these fucking every guys they on. Are. Oh, they're horrid. And uh, you watch this and you're like, dude, it's weird. It's a weird thing to say. Like, y like just don't let Muncie and Bellinger beat you because those guys are traditionally, you know, really good players. You got an MVP in there, you know? And, and yeah. you watch that shit, you're like, fucking don't want that guy. Like, let that guy, be if he beats you, he fucking beats you. He got lucky. Yeah. But don't don't let him have it, man. And And – you got to cut that shit out. You got to cut the walks down. You're going to have to play perfect baseball, which by the way, they're capable of. I listened to a little, little of your guys' podcast 
Um, and of course, Jeff totally fucking missed the point about what I was saying about umpires last night because he's a dipshit. But um, <laughs> uh, you know, that's a whole different. My whole thing is I don't. The zone wasn't even that bad. The zone was. It's been consistently bad all year. I'm not blaming the umpires for last night's loss. I hate the fact that that umpire threw threw Tingler out as he was walking away. I'm getting real tired of the you can't say anything to me because I'm the infallible uh, umpire with, you know, and it's just like, bro, we're in a fucking playoff game. I'm about to chirp your ass for nine innings. And guess what? You're in a union. You're getting paid. You're going to put earplugs in if you don't like it, because I'm going to wear you out for nine innings and you're a pro. You can handle it. They're just words. They're not going to hurt you. And if your strike zone sucks, I'm going to tell you about it. But you you see so many times. What do you see, Pele? This, this, mask off, yeah. walking towards yeah. the dugout, pointing, spoiling for a fight. Dude, you don't – can you ever think of – you ever see uh, NFL coaches lose it on – you ever see Brian Kelly yeah. lose it on a coach till he's red in the face? Nick Saban throw his yeah. fucking headset. You ever yeah. see those guys get thrown out of a game? Yeah. I never have. Everyone. I've never no, seen they never those get guys get fucking run. Never once yeah. have I seen, hey, you, you're gone, Nick. Never, yeah. never once. And it drives me, it drives me batshit crazy. So, no, the, uh, the zone wasn't that bad. They didn't blow many calls. But I'm just getting tired of the, I'm going to, it's, it's my show. You're on my yeah. field. No one is paying to watch these fucking clowns. And, yeah. I, dude, I, you know, I hate umpires at every goddamn level. Little league. High school, adult league, college, yeah. pro. What do we What do we always say? We go first. You, you go into this game as a player. Then when you can't play anymore, you coach. And when you realize yeah. you're not good at that, you become an umpire. Yeah. When you want, That's when you're cool. on, you have a when you have a death wish, then you become an umpire. It's the worst fucking job. They're the worst people. I can't stand <laughs> any of them. I've never liked one. If I've ever That's... been nice to you and you're an umpire, I was fucking lying. I was bullshitting. Because I can't stand you guys. I can't. I can't stand you. You're terrible. No, I. You know, obviously, the, some oh of that's tongue in cheek. But no, it's. Uh, you know the. Um, the it's just such a. It's such a big series, and I just you know I want I know this team is capable of a lot better baseball than they played last night. There's no doubt. No doubt. They they are. Hopefully, we aren't talking about Angel Hernandez or anything down the line either. But. We, uh, man, I, I, I always appreciate the time, man. And I got I got I to, I got to tell you, man, I, I'm so happy for you about expecting you. your second son in a few weeks and the new house and, and give my best to, to Bo and Hannah. You guys are doing great. My favorite people. So, uh, again, I love I you guys, man. Appreciate it. There's All nothing right, go worse than having to do, a, do an interview after working a long four hour shift, but I, I love you, my man. Pleasure. I wish you guys the best. You love got you it. too, brother. Take Talk care, to you soon.